Hey guys, Eric Poulin here. Today I want to give you a look at my no cook, no cold soak hiking diet. So let's get into it. So a lot of people ask me, what do I eat on trail? And people are surprised to learn that I don't do any cooking and I don't do any cold soaking. So what do I eat, right? So first let's talk about the advantages of this strategy, the no cook, no cold soak diet. Well, firstly, there's less time cooking. There's less time cleaning. There's no water needed to cook. There's no water needed to clean. There's no need for pots, pans, mugs, silverware. There's no need for fuel. And all of this results in a lower base weight. Not only less weight, but less bulk in your pack from carrying all these additional items. So the no cook, no cold soak diet has a lot of benefits, especially if you're hiking in the desert where water is scarce. Now let's talk about the drawbacks. And really there's only two drawbacks that I can think of and that's you don't get a hot meal and it's probably not as healthy. But one could argue that the hot food you eat might not be all that healthy anyway. So really the biggest drawback is you don't get a hot meal. So for just sacrificing a hot meal, you get a ton of extra benefits. So it's a great strategy for the right person, uh, but it clearly isn't for everybody. With that said, let's take a look at the food that I'm eating. And basically I've broken this down to breakfast, lunch and snacks, and dinner. So first we'll start with breakfast. And typically with breakfast, I'll have some sort of dried fruit. This is dried mangoes, the Philippine sweetened mangoes. These are dried strawberries. These weren't available for a few years and now they're back on the shelves in most of the major grocery stores. Very cool to see. And I also like to have some type of protein bar. And lately I've been really digging these Lenny and Larry's Complete Cookie uh, protein bars. Got a pretty good uh, you know, array of uh, macronutrients, proteins, fats, and carbs. And you know, if you look at the label, these guys look like trustworthy guys. I think they, you know, they're the guys that make a good cookie. And then the other thing I like to have for breakfast is bagels. And unfortunately the Safeway uh, grocery store I just visited didn't have the, the apple cinnamon flavored Thomas bagels that I normally get. I like to get those and just smash them down and they, they compact really well. And it's just, uh, it's, it's a pretty good easy thing to eat plain. So instead I got these cheese bread loaves for this, uh, for this section of my hike. And these are pretty good as well. You can, you can smash them down so they take up uh, less bulk in your pack. And these are good just to, just to eat as is. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever. Great snack, they taste good, they keep well. Uh, really recommend any kind of bread like this. Uh, it's a bit bulky, but uh, it tastes really good and it's just easy to eat on trail. Now for lunch, I'll typically either eat just snacks if I'm just not feeling that hungry, or I'll also eat the same thing, pretty much the same thing that I would eat for dinner. Uh, so I'll get to the dinners in a moment and we'll just focus on the snacks. Uh, these were left over from my previous section, so it's not a full bag here. These are the Gardetto's uh, rye, garlic rye chips. These are really good. These are uh, sesame sticks. Uh, these are salt and vinegar flavored almonds. You can eat, you know, obviously whatever flavor almonds you like. Now they come in all these different flavors, which make them so much more palatable than the plain raw almonds. Uh, but if you can stomach the, the raw and plain ones, uh, good on you. And one of the other things I really eat a lot of is these beef sticks. For whatever reason, they're one of those things I can always eat on trail, even when uh, other things aren't tasting that good to me. Uh, beef sticks. For some reason, I can just always eat these. One of the other things that I bring a lot of is these salt and vinegar flavored uh, potato chips. Any kind of potato chip will work for you, whatever your favorite flavor is. For me, I just crave salt. These salt and vinegar chips really hit the spot for me. And for snacks, I've pretty much grown out of the, the really crunchy type of granola bars and have moved on to these Nature Valley soft baked oatmeal squares. And one of the other things that is a, a pretty good replacement um, or a similar item to these is the uh, Belveda. Uh, they make a soft baked kind of snack just like this. They come in various flavors, apple cinnamon. Um, they're really, really good. Anything soft baked, I've been really, really digging lately. And then for my water, when I get tired of just plain water, or if you have water that tastes really bad because your water source is uh, maybe not the best, uh, some type of drink mix. 
So whatever store you go to, they'll have their own brand. Uh, I really like these orange tangerine ones. Um, you can get whatever flavor you like. These are just good to have a couple of these on hand. And now the main bulk of what I'm eating, I guess my, my staple meals, would be 100% whole wheat tortillas, and then either uh, pre-cooked bacon or pepperoni with uh, cheese. And the sharper the cheese you can get, the better. It just uh, keeps better. Um, both cheese, uh, the pepperoni, and bacon do really well without refrigeration. And I know a lot of people are very apprehensive to just uh, kind of take these things and just not refrigerate them. Uh, but these are salted cured meats, and these are uh, this is basically the way that uh, people kept these type of meats for long periods of time before refrigeration was a thing. Uh, so don't be too hesitant about that. I've had these in well over 100 degree temperatures for over a week, and these are still totally fine to eat. So do not be afraid of keeping these in high temperatures without refrigeration. They are totally fine. Uh, and basically what I'll do is I'll take two of these tortillas and double them up. So I'll have two tortillas, two cheese sticks, and then, you know, whatever, pepperoni, bacon, or maybe a combination of the two. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll do my big ones at night and do two, uh, two tortillas. And then for lunch, maybe I'll do a lighter version and just do one tortilla, one cheese stick. Whatever works for you. And then because tomorrow is Thanksgiving, you've got to have some sort of feast. So I'm going to feast on these Sour Patch children, and that'll be my Thanksgiving treat. Now, of course, there's other variations of this diet you can do. You can mix and match. You can replace this stuff with different things that you like. The idea is, is that you just, you don't need a hot meal, right? Um, a lot of people just get fixated on the fact that it's dinner time and I need something hot. And now the way I keep this food in my backpack is with two of the OPSAC odor-proof bags. I've hiked five to 6,000 miles using these bags. I've never had an animal encounter. I've set these bags down full of food in a field full of mice and rodents, hundreds of them running around. Just set this on a rock and they never touched it. So I'm a big believer in these and you need some sort of way to, to prevent animals from getting in your food. And I think the best way to do it is to prevent them from smelling it in the first place. Now the weakness on these bags is the seal. Uh, if you expect one of these bags to last a full through hike, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Expect to replace these perhaps once a month or so. And I think that's a fair trade-off for uh, 12 bucks or so for two of these to last a month. I think it's a pretty small cost to be able to sleep all throughout the night not have to worry about your food. And the way I like to put this food in these two bags is I'll put all of my dinners and my drink mix items in one bag and then all of my breakfast items and all of my snacks in the other bag and the reason I do that is just to make it easier to get the food you want quickly when you want it. There's nothing worse than having to sort through all of your food to find the one item that you want to eat. And I think the biggest argument to this type of diet is going to be nutrition. Um, I would counter that a lot of people that do things like cold soak, um, you know, what kind of nutritional value are you getting out of cold soaking your ramen noodles? And there really isn't a whole lot of nutrition in ramen noodles. In fact, I would argue that this diet gives you a much greater um, array of macronutrients than ramen noodles. And I've been eating a version of this diet on trail for you know, eight years or so. It's been working really well for me. I really enjoy not cooking, not cleaning. It's something I, I don't really like to do at home. Um, and when I'm tired after a long day of hiking, I want to do it even less on trail. So it works really well for me. By no means am I trying to push this diet on anybody else. I just want to give you this information to let you know what's possible. Um, and I'd rather have this video be more of a discussion where we can share this information with each other and, and maybe learn different tips and tricks uh, from other people. So if you have any uh, questions, comments, or just uh, maybe your favorite no cook, no cold soak items, go ahead and leave those in the comments. Thanks for watching and hope to see you on the next video.